welcome ladies and gentlemen boys and girls we are back uh this is right after i literally just recorded uh my reactions and my little discussion bit for the uh sony playstation state of play and i was wondering what the hell happened to persona 5 news where was it well apparently it was live streamed didn't know that so apparently they did a five minute live stream uh, something called the Morgana Report, where Morgana just kind of, you know, talks over some gameplay bits and basically goes over some uh, details of new things to come in Persona 5 Royal and stuff like that. But, um, honestly, I don't speak Japanese. But I just kind of want to look at the trailer here. Trailer. I say trailer, but, you know, live stream event, the Morgana Report here, and just kind of just kind of go through it with you guys really to be honest uh again i'm still on my ps4 so if my controller dies in the middle of it fuck my life you know um but yeah without further ado let's look into it because persona 5 was a fun game i still like persona 3 though <laughs> so let's get into it It's not subtitled, sadly. Hi, Morgana. Goki Genyo. Good afternoon, guys. I don't speak Japanese, but I know Goki Genyo means good afternoon. Persona 5, the Royal. Is Morgana feeling himself? Shut the fuck up. Motherfucker kept telling me to go to sleep. I'm tired of him. Especially fucking trying to get the platinum trophy on Persona 5. All I gotta do is read some books and get the fucking. and uh. do all the side quests, but Morgana keeps telling me to go to sleep. What are you saying, Morgana? <laughs> Come on, show some screen. Show some, show some gameplay. I can't do this any longer. All right, there you go. The Morgana report. Motherfucker got his own logo. So what are you gonna talk about? What are you gonna show off? Probably gonna talk about uh the new character Kasumi. Uh, forgot her last name. Starts with a Y. Oh, more story. All right. Yeah. So that's our new character that'll join our team. Apparently, uh, this is the first time, I assume. Not first time, but, like, a couple of the first times. You know how, like, uh, how the main protagonist, Akira, not Rin, how he, uh, meets on. It's probably gonna go down a little bit like that, where they have little instances and stuff like that. That's our critical attack. Alright, cool. Also, the new confidant, which is a school counselor, which was very much needed, because literally... After the whole Kamoshida shit, and he appears after the Kamoshida sh Kamoshida, Kamoshida shit, but literally, after the Kamoshida stuff, uh, oh, are these more school events? That's interesting. Um, but after the Kamoshida stuff, you do, uh, you do Madarame stuff, and the first thing Ryuji says is, come on, on strip for the guy, right? So that was kind of shitty, kind of on the nose there. Is like literally her friend just committed suicide for that shit. So everyone's saying that's human Morgana, most likely human Morgana. Uh, what I'm really interested in is um, who the hell is the person next to next to uh, Futaba in that scene? Because like. From the back, it kind of looks a little bit like her mom, right? But it's not her mom, though. I don't know who the fuck it is. It has to be someone she's, like, comfortable around because she's sitting next to them, right? What is this, new locations? Yeah, okay. Yeah, Kijijoji, which is a real place in Japan, which is, like, a hangout spot for teenagers and shit. Like, a lot of shopping, like a shopping district, basically. Which is nice, because there's been a lot of, uh... In Persona 5, there's a lot of stores you see that you can't go into, and you're like, man, I, I wonder... 
I wonder what the hell's happening there. A new hangout spot for like uh, confidants. You have the aquarium, which is nice. I'll be taking Kawakami there. Don't worry. Uh, in text, it's nice that they show pictures now, which is great. Also, you can hang out with the twins outside the Velvet Room now. That was something that was... I kind of felt like that was missing in Persona 5. Because in Persona 3, you can either hang out with, you know... Well, Persona 3 FES, you can hang out with uh, Elizabeth. But in Persona 3 Portable, you can either hang out with Elizabeth or Theodore. Same thing with Persona 4. Um, you really didn't hang out with Margaret. But in Persona 4 Golden, they uh, added uh, Marie in the game. And you hung out with Marie. So she kind of filled that role. But Margaret still was a fucking asshole. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I was really surprised that you couldn't really hang out with the twins because, especially with everything the fucking twins do with you, like, but, like their confidant, like, when you do that, that was interesting. And when you fight the twins and beat them, it's like, huh, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, also, I, like, I recently did, like, a third playthrough of Persona 5, which is probably like what my i don't know my fourth most played persona game i guess because <laughs> persona 4 i played like 10 times and that that's not even counting persona 4 golden <laughs> but yeah one of the things in persona 5 is that i was trying really hard to be able to go to this area this isn't a new area this is the um the kind of disney world ripoff that you and your friend uh, friends hang out with after the uh during the whole haru shit like during the whole Okumura storyline, right? But yeah, I, I was trying to go to this place and it, it was on my map. It kept saying like, here's the travel fee for it and stuff. And I was like, maybe it's a hangout spot for like one of your confidants when you max them out. Like, so I was, I tried, I tried repeatedly to go, but I just never could. Um, but yeah, maybe they'll make this place a little bit more accessible. I'm really surprised that you go here of all places with the twins and not Dome Town, but whatever. But whatever's gonna happen with the twins are awesome. What the fuck is happening here? This is interesting. I don't know what the fuck this is. Maybe like a new event with the twins or something, or like the Velvet Room's getting fucked up. More powerful ver versions of personas. I mean, not personas of the demons. Demon persona, same thing. Uh, the shadows. All right. So maybe on like a new game plus, they'll present a, a harder challenge. Uh, a little bit of redesign going on with the palaces, which is very nice. What the hell is it? This is awesome. That's very nice. That looks great. There are some palaces that really need a kind of a redesign, especially mainly because not because they're bad, but mainly because on, you know, when you replay them on a new game plus, they're tedious as fuck, like the space station. That's annoying as fuck doing that on a fucking uh doing that on a um on another playthrough like a new game plus, the space station was really fucking annoying. Because there's so much, like, fetch quest shit. Like, not even the final puzzle at the end. That wasn't even that hard. But, like, it's just... It feels so fetch questy. You know? So, hopefully they redesign shit like that. Kamashita's palace is a little bit too long. I mean, I like the aesthetic of Kamashita's palace. But it feels a little bit too long. Especially on another playthrough. Uh, the bank is alright. It's not too bo uh, bothersome. Same thing with the uh, pyramid. Not that bad. Uh, Monorama's Palace... Mm, it's so-so, you know? There are some annoying bits, but... Other than that, it's whatever. So apparently, I guess Morgana's like, if you want to know more, go to Atlas Tube, right? Uh, they'll have more details there. Probably. Are you saying that's all? That's all for it today? Yep, okay, cool. All right, Persona 5, the Ro oh, come on, open your eyes, Morgana. There you go. Persona 5, the Royal. Nice artwork. I love it. Uh, we're probably going to see more of a catchy, you know, because it, there are some parts of the story that end pretty abruptly. Let's just say that. 
uh, because there's still people who haven't played Persona 5, and there's still fans of Persona 5 who haven't even touched the damn thing, so, yeah. Um, but before we go, I actually want to go over some things, because yesterday, before this announcement came out, uh, there were some leaks in the, um, about what the announcement was going to be. There's also an interview with the developers, so I kind of just want to go over a little bit of the, um, strong points here. Um... Fuck, I haven't even read this damn thing myself. But, you know, there's some questions. Like, one of them is, uh, one of them is, which man you chose the, uh, the title of the Royal? And apparently, when it comes down to it, like, the developers were like, oh, uh, Royal was, came up early in development. Basically, they wanted to call it Royal because they wanted to make it feel like a new, pristine, cleaner version, better version of Persona 5. Right? So that's why they chose it. Not because of Royale. Um, is there going to be a assist feature? Another question is, is there going to be a assist feature kind of like the Vox Populi, which for people who don't know, when you're playing Persona 5, you press the touch button, bam, a whole thing comes up that shows you what other people did, uh, with their time in the game, maybe helps you out a little bit. Um, I believe that's what the Vox Populi is. That's what I believe that that's what that was called. <laughs> I never knew it had a name. Uh, I just, I just always called it the network feature. Um, but yeah. And apparently they said, oh, well, uh, we made a better version. Uh, it's kind of different from the Vox Populi, but it's something that will help you a little bit more than the Vox Populi will. So it's kind of a somewhat of a new mechanic. That's what they go to talk about. Uh, a new town and fun that comes with it. The question was, could you chose another major addition to the new exploration locations? Cool. Uh, indeed, you'll be able to walk around it. Did a lot of research deciding what towns to add. And we end up choosing Koji Jijo at the town that would be suitable for depicting the current era. So, yeah. So it's like, they're like, well, what's a place uh, teens nowadays will hang out with? Koji Jijo is pretty cool. It's a shopping area, a lot of hangout spots, you know, kind of a tourist trap a little bit. But yeah, yeah, you know, kids will hang out there more than a fucking, I don't know, ramen shop, right? <laughs> Because it's like, hey, where do you want to go to hang out with your friends? Oh, I guess we'll eat ramen again like we're fucking Naruto. Am I right? Fucking Naruto. All right, question. A darts facility has been added to the game. Is this in Koji Jijo? The answer was yes. As a part of collaboration with Dart Darts Live. Wow. We borrowed one of their actual dart cabinets and, sta uh, and the staff were excited to laugh. What? The staffs are excited to, uh, uh, to it. What? Oh, addicted to it. My bad. I'm sorry. I, I kept re reading that wrong. Oops. My bad. <laughs> uh, just like the batting center in Persona 5, this is a full-fledged, full-fledged, wow, full-fledged minigame. So we hope you'll enjoy it. All right. Uh, various things to rediscover in Persona 5 with new characters. I'd like to ask about the new characters in P5R to get right to the point. What kind of character is Kasumi Yoshizawa? Well, Kashimi Yoshizawa is a new student at Shujin Academy who has been a high achiever in uh, rhythmic gymnastics since middle school. She, uh, since she goes to the same school as the protagonist and his friends, there will naturally be many points of contact between them. Introducing new character adds a new perspective and meaning to the story, while also letting us dig deeper into the character we already know and love. Kasumi was created after much discuss about what kind of character would allow us to realize that. All right. The next question goes on. Kasumi seems like she'll play an important role from early on. Will this impact the general outline of the story? Uh, Wada goes on to say, We're making sure to honor the original Persona 5 story. In fact, if we revise it too much of the story, it'll just be, uh, it'll just be to incorporate Kasumi. And then it ends up turning into a different story from the original. We were very particular about not letting that happen while making careful adjustments to let her blend into the story naturally. Which... I can see where that comes from, you know, because uh, there are some instances, uh, take take a Persona 4 Golden as, as example. It's like, how do you incorporate new confidants like Marie in the other confidant, which will go unnamed, <laughs> and, um, and how you have that meld and fit with the story, and it's like, well, we can't change the story too much, but we still can add in bits and pieces where the story feels kind of empty and include that character and have them interact with other characters. And that's kind of where Marie was at. The whole, like, ski trip thing was added and stuff like that, like like that in Persona 4 Golden, which was very 
awesome, fun, and hilarious and enjoyable in all the right type of ways. So that was pretty cool. So they're probably going to do the same with um, with the uh, new confidant with the new confidant of the uh, school counselor, which is very much needed because, again, fucking, um, like, literally after you do the whole thing with Kamashita and on and, like, all the sexual harassment shit that goes on very early on in the story, which is, like, the hardest mood setter for Persona in a while, uh, um, fucking... Uh, like, right after that, you instantly go and do the Monorame Palace, and literally the first situation that comes up is, come on, on, just strip for the guy. He, like, what's the problem? Stop being a bitch, right? And it's like, are you serious, Ryuji? Like, re- not only Ryuji, but your own character, too. It's like, are you guys serious? Even Morgana, it's like, are you guys serious? Like, An and Shiho just went through some shit, <laughs> I don't think that's helping. So they kind of need something to introduce there to like soften that blow a little bit. Like it's very comedic. And honestly, like, you know, Ryuji, Morgana and Akira. His name's not Ren. Fuck the anime. Uh, Akira fucking, you know, it's all for fun and games. But it's like it's kind of a little on the point, on the nose a little bit. You know, it's only been like it hasn't even been like a month since Kamashita was dealt with, right, and then that shit starts to happen, so, you know, and then it becomes a nice little joke throughout the rest of the game, which is still kind of fucked up when you think about it, especially with the shit On went through, so, yeah, um, let's see, what's the next question, uh, next question, uh, question, wow, next question, it seems kind of refreshing to have someone who's called the protagonist senpai and laughs, excuse me? (laughs) <laughs> wait a minute is kasumi like a first year no way what indeed age-wise futaba is underclassman as well but kasumi is the first character that calls protagonist and his friend senpai honestly i think that was kind of avoided in persona 5 because in persona 4 there's a lot of senpai getting thrown around like god damn you get it from naoto you get it from uh rize and you get it from kanji too like god damn senpai fuck like shut up oh senpai notice me <laughs> that's where that senpai notice me shit comes from it's fucking it's goddamn rize rize kuzukawa always bothering you <laughs> uh what was the concept behind kasumi's design all right uh sojima uh, sojima says adding a new character to a pre-existing game and this goes for more than just persona 5 is something that requires a certain mental attitude from the character designer the people uh the people who will uh people who will be interested in persona 5 r first r i don't know why i call it persona 5 r it says p p uh fucking p5 r (laughs) and p5 r first of those uh first are those who are already fans of persona 5 so you have to be careful when designing the newcomer or else she'll look out of place amongst the familiar faces. That's kind of a problem that happens in a lot of remakes and shit. Uh, another thing is I remember there was a, a little bit more of an interview somewhere. I can't find it. It's not here. But they also wanted to say something like when designing like Marie from Persona 4, they wanted to make her stand out because she played kind of an important part of the story, you know, but... N- but Marie didn't constantly hang out with your characters, right? She didn't join the team or anything like that. So with uh, Kazumi Yoshizawa, she's going to be there. And especially since the story is apparently she transfers to the school the same time as your main character around, like, literally within spring, which is the beginning of the game. But maybe you don't interact with her until the end of the game, which I kind of find hard to believe. Because I know there's a lot of people saying that because it's like, you're not going to tell me there's this one character who's who's been in the school and you never notice them at all. I get it. She's an underclassman. But I mean, like, it's kind of hard to believe that a little bit, especially if she's like someone who's who's like not an idol at the school. Again, she's an underclassman, but someone who's like very outgoing and stuff like that at least from what it seems in the interviews and stuff like that so you'll probably meet her early on in the game and she'll probably 
get integrated in the game a little bit more early on, but doesn't come to play until like towards the, you know, towards the, uh, towards like Christmas in the game and stuff like that, you know, that maybe that's when her role will truly shine, right? So kind of like, kind of like a catchy a little bit where, um, where it'll most likely be a thing where she's probably present in the game, but you really don't, you really don't do Phantom Thieves stuff with her until like, you know, within like the third act of the game. So that's probably what's going to happen because I don't know. It's kind of interesting, especially with the way Persona 5 ends where it's like, how is it possible that you guys are still doing Phantom Thieves shit? So, you know, that's a little, a little weird. Um, let's see. It requires the same amount of attention as story side of things then. Uh, Persona 4 Golden, Marie had a special position because she was new to Velvet Room. Okay, yeah, here it is. They keep going about it. Um, and we drew her in the way. All right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. However, Kasumi has been added to the story itself. When designing her, I had to be cautious of the fact that she would become symbolic of P5R and drew her in a way where she wouldn't look at a place amongst the rest of the characters. All right. Uh, <laughs> her ribbon and her ponytail are cute. What the fuck? I don't know where that comment is for. But, uh, thank you. La <laughs> Insert laugh here. Uh, since Kazumi does, uh, rhythmistic gymnastics, I want to give her a, a dignified aura. I also give her a straightforward design for that classic heroin feel. I understand it. You know, ponytails. <laughs> Ponytail. Alright, what about her Phantom Thief appearance? Kazumi doesn't form a uh, Kazumi doesn't form a pair with the protagonist. What? doesn't form a pair with the protagonist what the fuck does that mean but since i was drawing her as an i as an icon of p5r I designed her phantom thief appearance to feel like it goes alongside the protagonist the idea of uh, phantom thieves in itself has manga-like elements right like with the protagonist i wanted this new character to have the coolest that everyone normally expect the coolest wow the coolness that everyone normally expects from phantom thieves a female uh, phantom thief that has a different stance from the protagonist what kind of character is she i hope you'll be excited to find out uh, how many more questions are there? Holy shit. <laughs> there's a lot here. Uh, let me just see if there's any, like, really, really hard-hitting ones that people might want to know. Uh, oh, here we go. One, uh, on that note, the teaser trailer that was released in March showed that Kazumi was skeptical about the Phantom Thieves of Heart, right? Uh, those who watched the trailer would get the impression, but of course, there are more to it than that. I, I can't go into details, but as you play the game, you'll also see a side of her that differs from the impression you get from her that lies in the trailer. Because, I mean, we'll also develop her confidant story, and we'll have further information about that later. All right. So, that was interesting. I know a lot of people kept talking about that. That First of all, a lot of people were like, oh my god, female protagonist, finally. Maybe... Maybe there'll be an instance where in the beginning you can switch out and play as Kasumi instead of the main character and they might have, you know, a little difference or something, you know, within the story a little bit. Uh, most likely not. But, um, but yeah, uh, the thing with her, not like the Phantom Thieves, it's like, honestly, that goes for a lot of the characters in Persona 5. If people haven't noticed that within the story, the only people who kind of really start out like not being antagonistic towards the phantom thieves is morgana and ryuji like you meet on she totally doesn't want anything to do with you she's like get away from me fucking you're that asshole from school that just you apparently you have a criminal record i don't want to deal with your bullshit don't bother me you're just like the rest you're gonna sit there and talk shit same thing with yusuke you meet him he's like guys Stop bothering me. I don't want you here. I just asked on to help me with something. That's it. You guys are fucking stepping into something you don't know shit about. Then you meet Makoto. Makoto's like, I'm here to tear you guys apart. Listen, you guys, so you're the Phantom Thieves. I've been taxed with finding out who the fuck you are. I know who you are, but I'll, but I'll make a deal with you. Help me with this, uh, help me with this drug shit going on in the school and, you know, Whatever, and then she comes to one of two guys. Same thing with uh, with Futaba and Alibaba. Same thing with Haru. They're both antagonistic towards you in the beginning when they first meet you, right? Same even with even with fucking uh, Akechi throughout the game. He's so antagonistic, uh, antagonistic with you. He enjoys your team. Like, come on. 
So that whole entire thing of her not agreeing with the Phantom Thieves, that kind of goes a little bit with everybody on the team besides Ryuji, Morgana, and fucking, and the main character. So there's nothing new there. I don't know why people were getting a tizzy about that, but that was kind of weird for me. Uh, let me see. Tahugo uh, Maruki, the the uh, the consultant, Arcana is also being introduced as a new confidant, and seems like he'll be adding yet another new aspect to the story. Let's see. Maruki is the Maruki is the school counselor, so his confidant will be involved with him, lending an ear to the protagonist's problem. Since he works for the school, he naturally will interact with Ryuji and An as well. And through those conversations, you'll be able to see what their uh, what's on their mind. Again. Was very much needed, especially with the whole Kamoshida shit. Especially, like even with On, a little bit with Ryuji too, because you gotta remember Ryuji had a past with Kamoshida, and like, fuck it, it, like he didn't like the way his track team was being abused and shit. So he kind of stepped up for it, got a little violent, and Kamoshida broke his leg and kind of fucked up his uh track running career. So I'm pretty sure there's a lot of regret in Ryuji at some point for that. Uh, of course, his confidant, he grows out of it and stuff like that. And he's all like, I need to stop dwelling on the past. But still, it's something that's kind of there, even to the end of the game, right? During the uh, during the whole, like, cutscene when they're on the ship. Like, you still see him kind of hit his leg a little bit. And he's like, come on, let's go, right? So, and like, even uh, towards the end of Kamoshida Palace, when they're running out of it, like, Riji kind of has a moment where he, like, trips a little bit because he's like, it's been a while since I ran like this, you know? But, yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. In Persona 5, there aren't many adults who treat the uh, who treat the protagonist and his friends kindly at the beginning of the game, but Maruki is a very gentle adult, so his, introdu his, in uh, his introduction is refreshing. Persona 5 originally had a evil adult versus kid setup going, so I think you'll be able to enjoy this different interaction here. Design-wise, I drew, uh, Soji, sorry, that was Wada saying that, and then Sojime goes on to say, Design-wise, I drew him to look like he'd be absent-minded and let down his guard around the students. It was another straightforward design. Alright, so that's cool, but I gotta, you kinda gotta wonder, it's like, does he play, like, if he's a confidant, obviously there's some sort of deal that will go on between him and the main character, and he'll learn about the Phantom Thieves, of course, with all the rest of the confidants, um, and, like, but, you know, is he just added there for more of a, like, more of a, like, cushion point in the story, or does he have, like, a bigger role, because that's kind of, a uh, I don't know, it's kind of, eh. even though it's very much needed in the story, it's still kind of weird to make it a confidant, so, I don't know, uh, let's see, let's see, or maybe he's there to be, to act as the teacher confidant for, for female protagonists, and make that creepy as shit, <laughs> as if Persona 3 Portable's Ken confidant wasn't creepy enough, right, uh, let's see. Uh, we'll be able to leverage Kasumi and Maruki's confidants in battle with new abilities. Yes. Uh, yes, as you pro uh, progress their confidants, you'll gain new benefits for each of them. Will there be another new confidant partners in addition to these two? If I have to say yes or no, the answer is yes. Please look forward for more information. So, there might be... So, there is going to be another confidant at it. Which is questionable. It's questionable because the only other really new character we've seen with a portrait is what everyone's been dubbing human Morgana, right? But, um, which is most likely human Morgana because in the screenshots with him, Morgana's not there, especially when a screenshot is the main character, Sojiro, human Morgana, and Futaba all in one place. And for some reason, Morgana's not there. That's weird. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, I don't think Human Morgana will be a, a social link because you already have a social link with Morgana. He's like the main story social link. So there's probably new characters that we haven't seen. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, let's see. Uh, as for the sprites shown during the conversation, I noticed that there are new illustrations for other characters too. 
Uh, we're drawing new art for quite a while. For a lot of parts, just changing the dialogue sprites already makes the scene looks new and fresh. The characters will also get new outfits in their third tr uh, semester. To be honest, the workload is quite troubling, but everyone on the art team is working hard, so please look out for the new art. All right. And then the last thing is I'm looking forward for the day I can play it. As the creators were pouring into Persona, f uh, we're pouring into Persona 5R. All of the thoughts that we had when we looked back at Persona 5 and felt I wanted to make more of this, or I think it would have been more interesting if we went like this. In addition to the new characters in the third semester, other parts of the game have also been brushed up to produce a new game experience, so please uh, look forward to it. At the very moment, the staffs are looking at a full speed united in finishing the game. This is a very important stage for our game, and we feel the game's quality is improving with each day passing. We'll keep running until the end, so that we can meet the player's expectations so please continue to show us your support and that's the end of the interview so that's pretty nice uh but something the interview doesn't say but i believe the famitsu article does say when the information got leaked is there's just a little bit of things where it's like um they change a little bit more quality of life things like uh, a way for people to get more experience faster in the game when they're doing a you know a second playthrough or something of the game like a new game plus kind of like with persona 4 golden where when you did a new game plus you had the option to set your difficulty wherever the fuck you want you had an option to set like if you want high amounts of money gained when you're playing a new game plus or um or uh whatchamacallit or high amounts of experience gained, or like, do you want the battles to be hard during this? Do you want the battles to be easy? Do you want to gain no experience at all, right? So, so that's pretty interesting that they added that in there, because, again, if you're someone like me, and you go for platinum trophies for time to time, Persona 5, I'm sorry to tell you, unless you're using an exploit, uh, and unless you, unless you know of an exploit to, uh, to get more money in the game you're probably going to play that game three times to 100 percent your compendium because you need a lot of money i did it trust me you need a lot of money it sucks um <laughs> but um they also go on to say that uh that there's at least like 20 new soundtracks in the game which it could be more battle soundtracks because because eh, all of the soundtracks in Persona 5, most of the soundtracks in Persona 5 is good. There's only two of them that I really kind of don't like. And one of them, pretty sure everyone kind of don't like it, Mementos. Mementos fucking sucks. It's boring enough that I got to go through a fucking labyrinth. And it's boring enough that I got to do Tartarus again. Because Tartarus was a pain in the ass in Persona 3. Uh, as At least you don't have that fucking condition mechanic going on. Fucking, I feel great today. I feel like shit. Your character is sick. You can't study today because you're sick. Fuck off. All right? I still love you, Persona 3, but god damn it, that shit was annoying. I know in Persona 3 Portable, they fucking, they tuck that down a little bit, but in Persona 3 FES, it's a pain in the ass. Um, but, uh, it's like Mementos, um, soundtrack sucked, right? That was bad. And then another one is the final boss in the game, besides it kind of ending abruptly, was, uh, the soundtrack just sucks. I'm sorry. Like, it's not really bad. It's not as bad as Mementos, but it's like the second worst soundtrack in the game because I get where they were going for, but it just sounds like compare it to compare it to like the final boss in Persona 4 or or like, you know, face myself from Persona 4 or fucking or uh, Battle of the Soul, you know, Hymn of the Soul. Uh, burn my dread, burn my toast. I guess is a toaster. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's like compared to all those soundtracks and shit, it's like, eh, Persona Five is kind of lacking, especially if you play the fucking uh, the um, Persona Five dancing Star Knight, right? And it's like, oh, here's the boss music, the Yabathal, whatever the fuck it's called. Like that's your final dance, and then your characters are dancing to it, and it's like. How do you dance to that? It's kind of weird, right? Um, but, you know. Uh, you know, there's also a bunch of new screenshots we can go over and stuff like that. But I feel like this video is getting way longer than it should be. We're going about like 20, 30-ish min uh, 30 minutes. Thir mm, I can't pronounce that. 30-ish minutes. And uh, 
Yeah, we've been here for a while. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of details that I skimmed over, but I don't want to make the video an hour long or anything like that. But honestly, Persona 5 Royal is looking pretty good. It says here on sale, this is, by the way, just to point out, this is the Japanese release date for it. The English version will not come out. English version, wow. The Western version of the game will not come out until uh, 2020. Which, when you say that out loud, it sounds like a while away, but it's honestly next year. <laughs> That's next year. So, uh, yeah. Oh, man, that was, a, that was a lot. That was a lot. I did not, you know what? I'm just kind of winging this video. I didn't think I would go that far with it. But I can talk days and days and days about Persona and the story and stuff like that. But if you want to talk to me about this type of stuff, or if you want to hear my ramblings, down in the description below is a link to my Twitter if you want to talk to me directly with no interference, my DMs are open to anyone. You can, you know, give me a little shout out, say hi, say I watch your videos, say you're a piece of shit and I hate you. Uh, you know, you know, introduce yourself something. If you have something you want to talk about, you know, if you're like, if you're like, hey man, have you heard of this game? What do you think about it or whatever? You know, my DMs are always open. You people can talk to me directly. You don't have to sit there and put it publicly to everyone, right? But um, but don't worry. <laughs> even if I even if I don't get to you right away, I do read a lot of uh, I do read a lot of the comments. <laughs> you know, I may not get to them right away, but I read a lot of the comments. So if you DM me, I'll definitely see it. I'll read it. I'll get to you, <laughs> right? Like I'm not I'm not a PewDiePie or anything, but you know I'll I'll fuck it. I'll get to you. All right, I'm not gonna sit there and leave you in the dust. You say hi, I'm gonna say hi back. I'm that type of guy. Anyways, um, as always. Oh, by the way, forgot to say this. By the time this video is out, by the time this video is out, wow. Uh, after this video is out, just keep an eye on the channel if you're interested. Keep an eye on the channel for like the next three days or so. I'm gonna be putting an update uh, on my channel just to let you guys know what's been going on, where I've been, and stuff like that. Uh, what's going to happen with the channel and upcoming projects and things that happened, uh, you know, because things still happen in the background. It's not all about the videos, right? That's pretty cool. Um, you know, uh, check out my other videos. Please, please don't look at my older videos <laughs> because they're kind of embarrassing and I hate looking at them, but they're still part of this channel, so I keep them up there, especially when I'm in front of the mic and I'm talking like, oh, right, you know, um, but other than that, as always, I want to thank, oh, also, for more Persona goodness, let me just throw this out there, um, I do have a Persona 4 playthrough on my channel, which is still ongoing, don't worry about it, I got this, guys, I got this, where I play the game, uh, on hard mode, this is not on not on New Game Plus or anything. Just kind of challenge myself through the game a little bit and have fun with it. Cause Persona Four is pretty good. It's not my favorite Persona game, but it's really good. So that's pretty fun. And also, the intro for the Persona Four Golden stuff is made by Volta Base. You can check him out at his Twitter, which is in the description of the Persona Four videos, because he's awesome. All right. <laughs> this video is going on long. Uh, video is going on long enough. I'm rambling. I'm sorry. So, without further ado, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. I'm a chef, chef to